Hi, it's me. One of my favourite things to do in the world is to test out Sigma's eye series of lenses and they have recently sent me a couple of new ones for a few weeks for testing. Here we have the Sigma 24mm f2 DG DNC. My review of Sigma's new 90mm f2.8 lens, well that'll come out in a couple of days time. Both that and this new 24mm lens are for L-mount cameras and Sony's E-mount mirrorless cameras, full frame or APS-C. Its price is going to be £550 in the UK, for the price in US dollars, take a look down in the description. This is Sigma's second go at launching an i-series 24mm lens. The last one came out only about 7 months ago. It was nice and small and had a great macro ability, but its maximum aperture of only f3.5 was pretty unambitious, not really any brighter than a common zoomable kit lens. Well, now they've come back for another try, and this one is a little bigger, but now has a bright maximum aperture of f2, making it a much more interesting proposition, much better for shooting in dark situations or indoors, and much more creative in the out of focus backgrounds it can give you. I love 24mm lenses with bright apertures, they can get you such dramatic images. I'd like to thank Sigma UK for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. It's a somewhat expensive lens, so I'll be doing my best to snuffle out any issues it might have. Let's get stuck in and look at this lens's build quality first. What leaps out at you about this particular line of Sigma's lenses are their awesome build quality, and this new lens is no exception. It's difficult for me to convey to you just how beautiful this lens is to handle, and how high quality just about everything about it feels. It's very solid, tightly assembled, and very metallic, with a nice mixture of brushed metal which feels amazing and looks pretty cool too. What do you think of its design aesthetic? It's modelled after a cinema lens, but still designed with stills photographers in mind. It certainly makes a bold statement. There's a thin weather sealing gasket around the rear lens mount, and Sigma claim that the lens is designed to be dust and splash resistant. Next comes the aperture ring. It turns with lovely, positive clicks, particularly if you turn it to auto mode, so you're not likely to accidentally change your aperture. This time, there's no option to make that aperture ring turn smoothly, it will only work with those clicks. Then, you get a manual focus ring, which turns extremely smoothly, and it works very responsively with the lens's focus motor. You can turn autofocus on and off with a very positive, arc-shaped focus switch, which is toward the rear of the lens. Manually focusing this lens is precise and responsive, however we see some quite notable focus breathing here, which might be a little troublesome for filmmakers. Let's take a look at the lens's autofocus system. It is reasonably quick, reasonably confident, accurate, and silent in use, no problems here at all. This lens comes with a standard lens cap that clips on, as you can see, but it also comes with something unusual, a magnetic lens cap that attaches itself right onto the front. Sigma are really thinking out of the box there. A magnetic lens cap holder will be available separately, which you can attach to your camera bag or somewhere else about your person. That could be an interesting solution for some people. The lens also comes with a very high quality, machined, metallic lens hood. Its filter size is 62mm wide, and it does not have image stabilisation. Overall, as I've said before, this line of Sigma lenses possibly have some of the highest build quality of any autofocus lens I've ever tested. They're just addictively good to handle, and definitely don't have the feel of a lens that's being mass produced. Well, let's move on and look at image quality now. I'll start by testing it on a full frame camera, my 42 megapixel Sony A7R 3 In camera corrections are turned on for this test. In the middle of the image we see excellent sharpness and contrast right away from f2, and the corners also really excellent, straight away from that bright maximum aperture, although vignetting is causing a little darkness here which you might want to further correct. Stop down to f2.8 or f4 for mild improvements in brightness and sharpness. The lens stays this sharp down to f11, where the effects of diffraction begin to soften the image. 
So this might well be an expensive lens, but the Emperor does seem to be fully clothed, at least. You are paying for one of the sharpest available 24mm lenses here. The only issue is that those corners are a little darker than I would like to see. Let's now mount it onto an APS-C camera, my little Sony A5100 with its smaller sized 24 megapixel sensor. At f2, the lens continues to be razor sharp in the middle of your images. The corners, however, begin to see a little softness creeping in on the higher density APS-C sensor. Stop down to f2.8 and they're just a little better, but at f4, they suddenly become very sharp again. And again, stop down as far as f11 and diffraction will begin to soften your images a little. So, on an APS-C camera, it's still a nice performance, but the lens is clearly a little more at home on full frame. Now, let's turn off in-camera corrections and see about distortion and vignetting. It's kind of become the norm now that manufacturers leave those to be corrected by your camera, which is clearly the path Sigma have chosen here. Just look at that barrel distortion. And unsurprisingly, there's a lot of vignetting at f2 also. Stop down to f2.8 or f4 to see that vignetting marginalised, but it doesn't go away any further than this, so keep those in-camera corrections turned on. Now, let's look at close-up image quality. As I mentioned, this f2 version of the lens can't get you as spectacularly close as the f3.5 lens can, but with a closest focus distance of 24cm, you can still use it quite easily for shots of smaller subjects. At f2, some resolution is still there, but contrast has obviously bottomed out quite badly. However, just stop down to f2.8 for good contrast to return, and at f4, sharpness and contrast close up are excellent. Let's see how well this lens works against bright lights. It's just an average performance here really. There is flaring and glaring to be seen when bright lights are directly in a picture, but nothing too disastrous. While we're working in the dark, let's look at coma levels, especially as the lens has a little bit of potential for astrophotography. At f2, coma or smearing on bright points of light is almost non-existent, and stop down to f2.8 for anything that was there to quickly go away. That's important on a wide-angle, bright aperture lens. Let's zoom out a bit and look at sun stars. It's only at f11 that sun stars begin to emerge, but stop down to f16 and they look nice and strong. Finally, let's look at this lens's bokeh. Open your aperture to f2 and get a little close to your subject for some lovely out of focus backgrounds here. The good news is that this lens's bokeh looks lovely and smooth, even when presented with difficult backgrounds and connected to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2, the soft close-up image quality makes it difficult to see, but we are catching a little colourful highlighting here. At f2.8, contrast returns as we saw before, and any colour fringing there is virtually gone, so longitudinal chromatic aberration doesn't seem to be a serious issue for this particular lens. Overall, well, this is definitely my favourite of Sigma's i-series lenses so far. They have chosen to be a bit more ambitious with its maximum aperture this time, and that has paid off in my mind, because not only do you now get a fantastically sharp lens with wonderful build quality, you also get the creative flexibility of a decently bright aperture to justify the lens's price. This is not an optically perfect lens, but in all the important areas, it comes together nicely. And there's not much more I can say than that, except that it comes highly recommended. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Testing lenses like this is a huge, huge pleasure, but it's also very challenging and time consuming. If you'd like to support this channel, then check out my link to my Patreon page down in the description below. There you'll find all kinds of exclusive content and videos for supporters. Ciao for now.